Hello everybody, welcome to the first video on the introduction to HTML. In this video, you will learn the structure of an HTML file as well as a few basic HTML elements. I will walk you through the process of creating your very first web page, and by the end of the video, you will have created a very basic web page that we will expand upon in future videos. Let's get started by opening up Visual Studio Code and creating a new file. Type any sentence you want into the file, such as, this is my first web page, and save the file. You can call this file anything you want, but it must have the extension .html at the end of the name. Now if you open that file in Google Chrome, you will see your web browser rendering the sentence you typed into the HTML file. While this technically works, the file we just created is not actually valid HTML. Behind the scenes, the browser is surrounding our sentence in valid HTML tags. To see what these tags look like, we will need to open the developer tools of Google Chrome. To do this, press Ctrl Shift I or Command Shift I if you are on a Mac. Upon doing this, you will be greeted with a fairly complex looking window. The data in these tabs is extremely useful in certain scenarios, but for this course, we will only care about the information in the Elements tab. The Elements tab shows us all the HTML elements our page is composed of, and as you can see, our page has three elements, HTML, head, and body. There is also a fourth element that every HTML page has, and this is called the doc type. The doc type is the first element of an HTML page, and must be the first thing in the HTML file. The doc tub tells the browser which version of HTML you are using. For all of our videos, we will be using HTML as our doc type. This tells our browser to use the most up-to-date version of HTML available. The next element is the HTML element. This element tells the browser that all the code inside the HTML element is HTML. This tag should contain everything inside of your HTML file except the doc type and should come after the doc type. The head element is the next element and is technically optional. The information in the head element is never displayed in the browser, but is instead used to set information such as the title or description of the page. This element is generally the first element inside the HTML element, but it does not have to be. Our last element is the body element. The body element contains all the information that we want to display inside the browser. This can include text, images, videos, and much more. Try updating your HTML file to include all these elements and also change the text to something else, then save the file. You may notice that Google Chrome does not update and render your changes. In order to force Google Chrome to update, you will need to refresh the browser. This can become quite annoying though if you must refresh each time you make a change, so we will download a plugin for Visual Studio Code called Live Server. This plugin will automatically refresh our browser every time we make a change. In order to download this plugin, Go to the Extensions tab in the bottom left of the sidebar and type Live Server into the search bar. Next, click the Install button on the Live Server plugin and then click the Reload button after the install is complete. This will restart Visual Studio Code with the new plugin enabled. Now if you open your HTML file, you will see a Go Live button on the bottom of the screen. This button will open your HTML file in your default browser and every time you save your HTML file, it will automatically reload your browser. You may notice that the URL in your browser has changed. It now looks something like this. This is because the Live Server plugin actually uses your computer as a server to serve the files to the web browser on your computer. Let's break down what this URL means. The first set of numbers from the URL, 127.0.0.1, is the IP address of your local host. This IP address is exactly the same on all computers and is the IP address of the computer's server. The second set of numbers after the colon is the port number. These two numbers work similarly to how an address of an apartment complex works. The IP address is like the address of the apartment complex, while the port number represents the apartment number of a single room in the apartment complex. If you do not specify a port number, the browser will automatically use port 80, which is the default port for HTTP communication. You now have all of the setup complete to efficiently develop HTML pages. You may notice though, no matter what you do, all of your text in the body tag appears on one line and is the same size. In the next video, we'll fix this by learning new HTML elements that will allow us to create text of various sizes and text that spans multiple lines. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with all future lessons. Thanks for watching.